This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. And now, the case of the martyred rat. Today, starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. It's past midnight, and beside a dark highway 50 miles west of the city, a young man stands in the driving rain, swaying weakly as he tries to flag down a passing car. His left arm hangs useless, the hand red with blood that drips steadily from under the... Hey, buddy! Hey! You want a ride? Hop in. Yeah. Thought there wasn't anybody ever going to stop. Oh, Nicky's hurt. Look at his hand. Hey, let me help you. What's the matter, fellas? Oh, you've been in a wreck. We'll get you to a doctor right away. No, no. Never mind the doctor. Get me to the nearest police station. Police? What happened? Were you held up? Yeah. Three guys. They hijacked my truck. Shot me. I. I. I... Oh, Nicky. He passed out. <laughs> Is this Mr. Henry Barton of the Barton Motor Freight Company? Yes. Who are you? My name's Carter, Mr. Barton. I'm speaking for one of your drivers, Red Kennedy. What? Is Red in trouble? Yeah, I asked you to let you know that his truck was hijacked tonight, ten miles west of Elm City. Good heavens. That truck was carrying a load worth almost $30,000. How about Red? Is he all right? He's been shot, but it's only a flesh wound. The doctor says he's in pretty good shape. You tell that doctor that I want Red to have the best of everything. What did you say your name was? Carter, Nick Carter. Oh, you're a detective, aren't you? Well, yes, I'm a private investigator. All right, then, go to work. Find out who held up my truck. Get that cargo back. Report to me tomorrow afternoon. Now, now wait a minute. I haven't said I'd take this case. I'm asking you, ain't I? How about it? <laughs> okay, I'll do it. For Red's sake, I don't like seeing people hijacked. Fine. See you in my office at 2 o'clock sharp. Good night. <laughs> Last night was an emergency. Oh. Shall I check the load on this crate? Yeah. Oh, oh Les, I yeah. want you to meet Mr. Carter and Miss Bowen. Miss Les gone. Oh, how do you do? Hello, how Les. Do do? This is a guy that ought to have this hole in his arm instead of me. Hmm? That was supposed to be his one last night. Oh, how come it wasn't? Well, I... Uh, I was sick and the boss asked Red to take over for me. I see. Lucky for you. Yeah. Come on, folks. I'll take you to the boss's office. He's waiting for you. <laughs> Well, Mr. Carter, what did you find out? So far, not much, Mr. Barton. We uh, did go out and take a look at the truck last night, but we couldn't tell anything from Matt. What do you mean? It's parked half a mile off the main highway on a side road. Yeah, that's where the hijackers made me drive so that they could load the stuff into their own truck. How about uh, tire tracks? Don't you detectives locate criminals or uh, things like that? Well, not unless there are tire tracks, Mr. Barton. Uh-huh. You see, there's plenty of mud where the truck was parked, sort of red clay, but the rain had washed out any wheel marks there might have been. Mm-hmm. In other words, you haven't found out one blame thing. Now, see here, Mr. Barton, you can't expect miracles. Miracles? <laughs> Look. What? Can you give me a list of everything that was stolen last night? Yes, I've got it right here. Cigarettes, nylons, silverware, electrical appliances, chemicals, and a lot of small stuff. Hmm. Most of those things could be easily disposed of. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, Red, uh, what about Les? Think he can drive tonight? Sure, Les is okay, Mr. Barton. Oh, is that the driver who was sick last night? Sick? He was drunk. Sending back to Kittery's boarding house to sleep it off. Made Red take over the run. Oh, look, boss. Les wasn't drunk. I told you that last night. I smell liquor on his breath. All right, so he had a drink, maybe two, but he never done it before, did he? No. He better not do it again. If it hadn't been for you, I'd have fired him on the spot. Well, Mr. Barton, I'll let you know as soon as I've got anything definite. Good. And don't make it any later than the day after tomorrow. But why bother starting the car, Nick? That truck's blocking the driveway. I know. We can't get out until someone moves it. Well, maybe half an hour. I'm going to try this other driveway. Okay, but... I notice it goes around the building. It ought to come out on the opposite side. Golly, this is a big old place. There used to be a brewery in the old days. Makes an ideal warehouse and truck garage. Well, I hope this drive doesn't come to a dead end in the back of the building. Well, we'll know as soon as I make this turn. 
That's okay, see? The road goes right on out. Oh, I think that was a shot. Shoot? Hey, uh, didn't hit you, did I? Oh. No, but what's the big idea? I was just shooting grass. Oh, a big game hunter, huh? Yeah, look, lady, this place is swarming with grass. <laughs> come out of that big drain from the old part of the building. The parts that don't use no more. And you shoot them as they come out? Is that the idea? Yeah, you betcha. Mr. Barton pays me a dime apiece for him. Sometimes you get 10 or 12 one afternoon. How much does Mr. Barton pay for innocent bystanders? Hey, I, I, I'm real sorry if I scared you, ma'am. But, oh, maybe I better introduce myself. Uh, I'm Amos Kittery. I'm kind of caretaker around here. Kittery? Yeah. Any connection with Kittery's boarding house? <laughs> you betcha. My daughter-in-law runs it. Then I bet you know Les Garner, one of Mr. Barton's drivers. You betcha. Rooms with us. Oh, lucky for Lefty, he wasn't making his regular run last night, wasn't it? I suppose you heard that his truck was hijacked. Yeah, you betcha. Funny thing, too. Les must have had a feeling something was going to happen on that run. Well, why do you say that? Oh, because he, he was nervous and jumpy all day long. Oh? oh like as if he was uh, dreading something. Dreading something? Yeah, yeah. He even started to drink in the middle of the afternoon. Les never done that since you know him. That's so. Yeah, you betcha. Acted like he had to work up his courage and go to work. <laughs> he got so drunk that the boss wouldn't let him drive. <laughs> so he stayed home safe and fed, huh? Yeah, not so as you'd notice it. Went right back to the saloon and started slugging him down again. Then all of a sudden, he jumped in his car and lit out. Lit out for where? <laughs> no telling. Didn't get back till almost daylight. And was that car a mess? Let's give me a dollar to wash it off for him today. Dog gun this red clay you ever did see. Red clay? Uh, you bet you like to never got it off. Take that road last night. Yes, that's it. I know what you mean. Mr. Kettery, where is your daughter's boarding house? Uh, when you get out of the street, you just down the driveway there. She's about a half mile straight ahead on the left hand side. There's this sign out in front. Uh, why? Because if any of that red clay is still stuck under the fenders of Les's car, I want to compare it with some I took off a truck. <laughs> Ain't likely they'd be the same. Maybe not, but if they are, Les Garner is going to have to do some pretty heavy explaining. <laughs> from the hijacked truck and that from Les Garner's car had exactly the same chemical composition. Oh, then they must have come to the same place. No question about it. But if Les was in on the hold of Nick, do you think he faked being drunk in order to get out of driving? Look, Patsy, suppose Les was approached by the hijackers and agreed to let them know when he'd be carrying a valuable load. Yeah. Well, they might have arranged a fake hold up. Why, yes. That could account for his nervousness that day. Right. Then when Barton refused to let him drive, Les would have had to get in touch with the mob and warn them that somebody else would be driving. And that might be how he got the clay on his car. Of course, we don't have any actual proof. No. Oh, just a minute. Nick Carter's up. It's Patsy Bowen speaking. I want to talk to Carter, young woman, right now. Oh, yes, sir. You better take it, Nick, it's Mr. Barton. Oh, okay. Hello, Mr. Barton. Hello. Think I have some news for you. Oh, you do? Well, I've got some news for you. Another one of my trucks has been hijacked. Another one? Yes. Who was driving it? Les Garner? What? Yes. How did you know? I'll tell you later. I don't let Garner get away. Don't worry. He won't get away. Good. The hijackers put a bullet through his head. So Les Garner, the man Nick counted on to lead him to the hijackers, has been killed. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the martyred rat. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. It's now 3 o'clock in the morning. Nick and Patsy have driven out to the scene of the holdup with Mr. Barton. State police are detouring traffic around the big truck, still parked beside the highway. The body of Les Garner slumped over the wheel. From the angle of the wound, Patsy, it looks as though whoever killed Garner stood here on the running board. Yes, and it must have happened without any warning. Otherwise, Les wouldn't have just sat there behind the wheel. Ah, you're right. There wasn't any fight. Plain, cold-blooded murder. Yes. Then you'll be taking another big loss, won't you, Mr. Barton? No, oh, I won't lose anything. All my trucks are fully insured against robbery. This cargo wasn't worth much anyway. Oh, it wasn't? No, no, the whole shipment consisted of tin kitchenware, toys, rat poison, cheap lampshades, dried fish. Nothing valuable. Well, I hope the hijackers were plenty disappointed. They weren't, though. 
Mm-hmm. At least they went to the trouble of unloading the stuff, even after they saw what it was. Oh, they must have been pretty dangerous, too, right on a busy highway like this. Uh, maybe they took the truck off uh, on a side road to unload it and then brought it back here. No, Mr. Barton. Les was killed here. The blood stains show that his body hasn't been moved from behind the wheel. Uh, uh, if you're all through, Mr. Carter, we'd like to take the body into town. Okay, officer. Thanks for your help. That's what we're here for, Mr. Carter. Okay, Doc, you can take over now. Oh, by the way, officer, yeah. exactly what time was the body found? Uh, let me see. I've got it down here. Uh, 12.45. 12.45? Yep. But you didn't notify Mr. Barton until after 1.30. That wasn't our fault, lady. We tried to phone him, but there wasn't any answer. Yeah, well, I, uh, <clears throat> my pinochle club met last night, and I, uh, I didn't get home till uh, after one. Pinochle club? Yeah, but come on, come on, let's get back to the car. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Hey, Mr. I'm Barton. I'm getting cold. Yes. How long would it take to move the sort of load you had on this truck from one truck to another? At least uh, half an hour. Why? I'm trying to figure out what happened. Well, it's plain enough. They made a big hole the first time, so they tried it again. And then no, they... no, no, no. Hijackers don't rob just any truck. They always have information about which trucks they're carrying valuable cargoes. But, Nick, this truck didn't have a valuable cargo. Which proves Mr. Carter is wrong for the second time tonight, young lady. The second time? Didn't you say that Les Garner was mixed up for the hijackers? I did. Well, the fact that they had to kill him to get the cargo proves you were wrong there, too. No, Mr. Barton. The hijackers didn't kill Les in order to get that worthless cargo. They stole the cargo in order to cover up his murder. What? You mean that Les was murdered so he couldn't talk about the first robbery? Exactly. What? The truck was hijacked to make it look like another holdup. Oh, you're crazy. Who knew what was on that first truck and what route it was going to take? Les knew, and later, superintendent knew, even before he took over his driver. But that's all. Well, didn't anyone else know? Absolutely not. Not even you? Yes, yes, of course, I knew. Oh, uh, Patsy, Mm -hmm. when we get back to town, remind me to call the newspaper. Call the newspaper? But why, Nick? Because you can locate all sorts of things through a newspaper ad. And maybe if we advertise, we can locate a murderer. Hey, Mabel, listen to this in the personal column. Wanted to contact motorists who are driving west from Deaver Springs Friday night between 11.30 p.m. and 1 o'clock. Call Surrey 905. Perfect. We're on that road about this. Yeah. Let me write that number down. Maybe I can help this guy out. Yes, Mr. Hammond, I'm trying to get information about a trailer truck that was parked just beyond the top of a long hill ten miles west of Deaver Springs Friday night. A uh, Barton Motor Freight Truck? Yes. Did you see it? I'll say I did. I got stuck behind it at the bottom of the hill and had to go all the way up and low. That's why I remember the name. Well, do you remember what time that was, Mr. Hammond? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I had the car radio on waiting for the 1230 news. It started just as I went around him at the top of the hill. Was there another truck on the hill at the same time? Uh, no. Just one other passenger car and me. If we were both stuck behind the truck. You say there was another passenger car? Yeah. And you know there was something funny about that, too. What was that? Well, I stopped about a mile farther on because I thought I had a flat. Uh-huh. But neither the truck nor the other car ever did pass me. Well, maybe the car turned off on a side road. Ah, uh, there aren't any on that stretch. Well, what sort of a car was it, do you know? No, no, it was behind me. All I could see was the headlights. Afterward, Mabel and I wondered what happened to it. I think I know what happened to it, Mr. Hammond. In fact, with what you've told me, I think I know the answer to a lot of things. Oh, Nick. What's the idea of exploring the basement of this old warehouse? Well, I thought it might be interesting to see what's down here, the unused part of it. Oh, but it's like a, a dungeon down here. I can... <laughs> Something ran across my foot. Yeah, probably a rat. A rat? Oh, dear. I thought we'd run into some rats. That's why I warned you to wear slacks in your heavy walking boots. Oh, but... Oh, honestly, this part of the building is alive with them. Oh. Here. Let's see what's on the other side of this door. You seem to know exactly where you're going. Look where I throw the flashlight. See those marks in the dust? Uh, oh, yes. Well, I'm following you. But if you asked Mr. Barton, he probably would have sent somebody along to... To clear the rats out of the way, at least. I didn't want Barton or anybody else to know we'd be snooping around this part of the building. Oh, here's another door. Can we go through that, too? Mm-hmm. Oh, golly, it's musty in here. Yeah. It must have been used for storage rooms when the place was a brewery. <laughs> oh, Nick, it's another rat. Look, Patsy, you insisted on coming along. Oh, no, but... Hey. They still use this room for storage. It's full of boxes and crates. Yeah, let's see what they are. Mm-hmm. Marvel kitchenware. Dried herring. Sassy flame shakes. Patsy. What? 
That's the cargo that was supposed to have been stolen from Les Garner's truck last night. And it wasn't stolen at all. Say that again. Oh. That truck was unloaded before it ever left the warehouse. Nice thing, but... Mr. Carter. Red. Red Kennedy. Yeah. And don't reach for your pocket, Mr. Carter. You couldn't draw very fast wearing them heavy gloves. My gun is aimed at you right now. I wore these gloves for protection against four-footed rats, Red. Can you... You hijacked your own truck? Yes, then murdered his own partner. That jerk wasn't my partner. I gave Les a chance to get in on the deal, but... He was a nice little boy that didn't believe in taking things that didn't belong to him. You're saying that Les Garner wasn't mixed up in that first robbery? He would have been if Barton had let him drive that night. But he didn't really want any part of it. That's why he started drinking. But he was there that night. The red play on his car proved it. Yeah, he was there. Trying to talk me out of it. <laughs> he said he was appealing to my better nature. So that's how you got shot. There was a fight? No, him. I just laughed at the jerk and sent him back to town. But... Then who shot you? I put that bullet hole in my arm myself. You... Just to make the hold up look like the McCoy. For a $30,000 cargo, it was worth it. And then when you learned that Nick was suspicious of Les, you killed him. That's right. Oh. Jellyfish would have spilled everything if he'd been pinched. So I unloaded his truck, told him the schedule had been changed, and that he was to pick up a load in Pittsburgh. And when he left, I followed his truck, flagged it down, and got rid of him. Won't be so easy getting rid of us, Red. No? No. If anybody hears shots coming from this part of the building... Are you be a... kidding you can shoot off a cannon down here without nobody hearing it outside? No. No, I got a better idea. Yeah? What is it? You're going to get locked in down here by accident. Oh, no. Yeah, wait a minute, Red. Sorry, Carter. Maybe I'll come back and see you again in a couple of years. Oh, Red, that's me. Nick. Nick, what are we going to do? Get away from the door, Red. I want to try something. But we can't. Did it work? No. Did you... Bullets don't mean a thing against the door well, like that. But, Nick, nobody knows we're here. Nobody will come looking for us. We, we've we got to break out of here somehow. We can't break out. Maybe if we yell out enough, somebody will hear us. Patsy, and... these walls are over a foot thick. No one can possibly hear us. No one can possibly... <gasps> oh, Nick. Nick, it's like being in a tomb. Nick. Nick, we're buried alive. <laughs> Locked in a forgotten basement room of the old brewery, unable to break out or make themselves heard, Nick and Patsy are faced with almost certain death. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of the case of the martyred rat. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Red Kennedy has left Nick and Patsy to die. Locked in a small, windowless basement room deep inside the old brewery. Now Nick examines the door with his flashlight. Can, can you do anything with the lock, Nick? There isn't any lock on this side. Not even a keyhole. It's all on the other side. Oh, if only somebody knew we'd come here. Oh, oh. What's the matter? Oh, another rat. They're all over. Oh. Hey, rats. Yes, rats. Look, Patsy, those rats must come from somewhere. And these are brick walls. Huh? There has to be a... Here, let me see. Yeah, there it is. There what is? A drain pipe. Here, hold the flashlight while I move some of these boxes. Oh, Nick, have you got an idea how we can get Martin out? Martin said this stuff included a shipment of rat poison. Yeah, but... Shine the light on this box. Uh-huh. Sure kill rat poison. They die outside. Outside, Patsy. And the rats can get outside through the drain pipe. Oh, but what good does that do us? Look, when I was a kid, I used to make rabbit traps out of a box to stick in a piece of string. Yeah, but Nick... You prop the box up with a sting and tie the string to it. Then when the rabbit goes under the box after the bait, you pull the string and the box falls down on top of it. Uh, I still don't Patsy, see. if we can get some of these rats into a trap, maybe they'll get us out of the trap we're in. Nick, what time is it? Four o'clock in the afternoon. Been in here 23 hours. I... I guess it didn't work, did it? Afraid not. It was such a nice scheme, too. Tying messages to the legs of those rats. Then letting them eat the rat poison. And escaping to the drain pipe. Darn it. One or two of them must have got to. The boxes containing the poison said they always go out into the open air to die. Well, maybe they died. And nobody found them. Yeah, maybe. Fire! Fire! Oh. Listen. That's Barton. He's found it. 
Can you call her? When old Amos Kittery brought me that dead rat with a message tied to its leg, I thought he was crazy. I don't blame you, Mr. Barton. I gambled on the chance that Kittery would either shoot or find one that had a message tied to it. Well, it turned out to be a good gamble, but why did you think you would find the stolen cargo where you did? Because Garner's truck was seen climbing the hill at 12.30, just 15 minutes before his body was found. And you tell us it would take at least 30 minutes to unload the truck. That's why I figured that truck must have been empty when it left the warehouse. I see. Then when I heard about the car that followed Garner up the hill, but no farther, I was pretty sure the driver of it was the one who killed Garner. Why? Well, there was nothing wrong with the truck, which meant that Garner wouldn't have stopped without being flagged down. And by somebody he knew. Yes, you're right there. He wouldn't have stopped for a stranger. It also had to be somebody who worked here, Mr. Barton. Sure, otherwise the driver of that car wouldn't have known the route. And he wouldn't have had a chance to unload the truck before it pulled out of here. Well, it could have been me, of course. Don't think I didn't think of you. Oh, oh you did, did you? Of course I did, but I checked your alibi. And you uh, didn't do very well in that pinochle game, did you, Mr. Barton? <laughs> no. That's why you didn't care to talk about it. Well, By the way, way Brad's confessed that the first cargo, the one that was hijacked when he was driving, is hidden in an old barn nearby. You better send out a truck for it. Yeah, I'll do that right away. And, Connor, I have got to give you credit. You did a fine job. Oh, thanks. There's, a, there's just one thing. Yeah. What's that, Patsy? Well, I still loathe rats, but I feel kind of sorry for the one that got our message through. We poisoned him, and then he saved our lives. <laughs> well, he was a martyr in a good cause, Miss Bowen. <laughs> We'll bury him with honor. Yes, Patsy. And every year on this day, you can put a piece of cheese on his grave. <laughs> Mind if I make the awards this week? Sorry, Mike, but it's been just too much fun giving away Fords. Okay, go to it. Try and stop me. Well, folks, here are the lucky people who get brand new Fords this week. Mrs. Bruce Gordon, Box 636, Hamilton, New York. Ann Hall, 5500 North Newland Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Mrs. Theodore Payne, P.O. Box 408, Washington 4, District of Columbia. And... Mrs. Vera Peter, 8017 North Whitney Road, Milwaukee, 11, Wisconsin. And to all these fortunate folks, as well as to all the other contest winners, let me say congratulations. And remember, we'll announce winners of the last week's contest as soon as possible. So be sure to keep listening. And, Nick, that reminds me, what do you have in store for us next week? Something real exciting, Mike. You see, it all started when an East Indian Maharaja lost a 100-carat diamond. Oh, no, Nick. It really started when the movie producer's daughter disappeared. Well, maybe so, Patsy, but it was because of the diamond that we found the dead body 3,000 miles from where it should have been. Hey, take it easy. This is getting too rich for my blood. What do you call this story, Nick? I call it The Case of the Star of Evil. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Because of the state of our schools, the future of 28 million American children is in peril. This means we must all work to improve educational conditions because the future of these children and their teachers is the future of America. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.